Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. And you're listening to the Drop, our weekly podcast about running. Yep. And life adjacent running. Yeah. Style, finesse, other adjectives. Number one podcast for style and finesse. Yes. I don't. I think we're starting a new category. That's like super why, trainers. That's how we're number one. Yeah. That's <laughs> how, what we do. That's how you do it. We yeah. make stuff happen. Like you made Legionnaires happen. We made birds not real happen. Yeah. The There's, Legionnaire is hot right now. I get so many DMs about I am, it. I'm Ugh. a little upset about it. Like so I kind upset. of almost like, let's just go back to the bucket hat people. No, the Legionnaire's here to stay. I, I It's called Legion season. We're in Legion season, baby. Right. I was on my, or I think my long run this weekend. Yeah. While you guys were out of town and passed some dude with a Legionnaire on and he smiled so big when he ran by me. I was like, uh, yeah. I know you know oh, that yeah. I know. <laughs> um, well, a lot of people at the run this past um, this past weekend were asking if like if I was why I wasn't wearing, wearing a Legionnaire. Legionnaire hat. And I had to be honest, I didn't want to be the main attraction. I wanted to, to be on Norda, so I oh, smart. I chose not to wear the Legionnaire. That's respectable. Yeah, Ralphie's decided to be part of the podcast. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I don't know right. if he's on camera or not, but he's sitting like a he's, regal beagle. He's on there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're boring. He's finally man. making his grand entrance. <laughs> grand I mean, entrance. before we get into it, because I really want to recap our trip out to California with Norda and Renegade Running. But before we get there, Megan, do we have any house cleaning to do? <laughs> housekeeping? We do have we, uh, housekeeping to do. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of, it's like a lot of shit around here. Right we'll, now. we'll pay someone in. We just had a family from Estonia stop by, yeah. and I felt like... <laughs> They're like, oh, nice trailer park you guys have. Yeah, here. I almost didn't want to invite them in, but I was like, uh, maybe they'll be okay with it. It's because it's grit season. All of the stuff is here. We're packing. There's a bunch of stuff everywhere. Yeah, so, so if you're waiting for your stuff, it's because we're hosting uh, families from <laughs> Estonia. Estonia. That's <laughs> what I tell people who come to my house. It's just grit season and I'm packing. That's a good yeah. excuse for everything. To be Grit fair, season. I am packing and unpacking a lot, which is really kind of annoying. I that's the worst. <laughs> I hate packing. And and three days later, you, then you unpack, and three uh -huh. days later, who's the person who's going to be traveling every week? Every it know, makes it easier when you're like on a schedule. Just buy a whole new set of clothing and luggage. No, and I mean have like something ready to go packing, at all times. Her packing is pretty easy though, because it's just ASIC stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Like bag in, bag out. The only thing she's bringing that's not is a pair, couple pairs of jean shorts. Yeah, that is the problem though. Is packing as a runner is that you have to pack a second set, full second set of clothing. It is yeah for a, every day. It yeah. is a burden that we must bear, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> they should they should invent maybe a, a suitcase or luggage where you can just throw the whole thing in the washing machine and it washes it all, keeps it folded. You don't have or to. What do if anything. you just yeah you just pour water <laughs> yeah, in the bag should. and shake it up. <laughs> There you go. And Robbie's then it, and then it folds your what clothes other, again. What was the other that's invention good. you had? Could you? <laughs> um, the laundromat? No. The laundromat that's also a bar? No, th those are no. It does exist. You had another idea that... Do those actually exist? Yeah. That is a great idea. Yeah. It's, they're usually called suds. Yeah. Because you drink some beers while you do your laundry. But I also have... I've a, never seen one. Oh, my God. Because you don't go to laundromats. I've never, yeah. True. I've also had the idea for a rage room before the rage rooms existed. This is like 15 years ago. Break stuff. Yeah, I was like, w you could make that in a viable business model, and I should have done it. The so only problem it, is that you really, you really can't because, like, okay, you go there once and you smash their dime store TV. Yeah. Like, I've seen the stuff that they're letting you break, and it's like, I don't want to break. It already looks like a piece of shit. You think it's just kind of like when you go to the carnival and you throw the little dimes into the... I, no, but I think I, it is. I've spent so much money winning stuff from a carnival that it's just a little dish, like a like an ashtray. Yeah, if you if you wanted to do a rage room, and it was actually staged to look like someone's real house, like porcelain, like finely decorated, or like their family urn like on the mantle. Good. Yeah, and then you go and spaz out and you break everything. That would be good. But these ones are like. Here's a TV you can smash. Yeah, yeah. like the room already looks like post-apocalyptic. Yeah. It had st like spray paint and tags. Yeah, it, looks like, it looks like crap. You could just go to be behind the dumpster mm -hmm. as usual and break stuff. I want to go to the queen's home and destroy a room. Yeah. And you know what? I'd want to do it. I'd want to have an actor in there that's a bad guy, and we fight, and like we use everything in the room to smash each other. Oh, like close quarters. Combat. Combat. Yeah, like I have to throw a... a I, I find the iron from the fire... We duel with that. Yeah. Then we break some stuff. But Megan has some other stuff right. she wants to talk about. Oh, yeah. 
right wow did that get but if you around? were in if you were in the queen's castle you would have armor maybe in that room maybe like under armor i see what i see what you're trying to do it was really really <laughs> rough so. i needed under armor in my tracksmith shorts the other day yeah go ahead meg <laughs> so <laughs> fun exciting local news July 29th. <laughs> Under Armour is Mark hosting Viviano the Sunset Tour. Sunset Tour. At their brand new track. Starts at 5 p.m. There's going to be all different kinds of heats, followed by a pro heat for women and men. Um, it's It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Everyone's invited. You can register right online at soundrunning.run slash tour. You get anything cool if you show up? Probably. I mean, it's I, Under Armour. Yeah. They love giving out we'll put stuff. Put the link in the description. What what What's the date again? July 29th. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday night. It's basically a week after our grit party, but the Saturday, not the next Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you that 29th? Are, in in, are you in town? I will be in Nashville. Oh, you know what? I think I'll be there. In I Nash- most definitely will be there because don't I need to be there with Brandon? Oh, at the Under Armour? Yeah, you are going. <laughs> I'm totally going, everybody. So you, get a chance to... Press palms, you know, do all that stuff. Glad hand. Glad hand, yeah. Are you going to be r- racing in this Turns, event? No, Is I'm it not going to be, be racing. R- racing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm collecting content for Under Armour. Okay. And then we're going to put it on our channel here at Believe in the Run. Hey, you know what, Robbie? It'd be great if you came. <laughs> yeah, I would go if I wasn't, I don't know. In Canada? I'm going to be in Virginia. All right. In a yeah. camping situation, in the heat? I think we got a... Uh, Airbnb. No, I'm camping this weekend. Okay, you yeah. always pick like the hottest, nastiest time to go camping. Oh man, one time my wife still won't let me down from the. We went in like the July Fourth weekend once in camping. It was like 95. Yeah, degrees. Yeah, like it's just not fun, dude. Do you know what's going to be in Austin where I'm going on Friday? Yeah, I do know. It was, 103 that's, degrees. Oh, oh that's oh, the temperature. I said, who's going to be? Yeah, there. I, I I was, no. we were all thinking all out boy. Oh, y'all out boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know you're jealous of that. I am jealous of that. I am jealous of that only because I know it's like a free ticket to get funky. Like I would totally like, <laughs> no, like, you know, like you, you can drink all day. Yeah. It's three hours. <laughs> what? What's the matter? <laughs> I don't even like what? All right. Yeah. People no, know keep that, that people, there. that people know. Um, yeah, that, that it would be a, <laughs> be a good time makes thinking about her decisions um in life right now yeah it's all right <laughs> just imagine what's coming um but <laughs> uh so y'all have boys playing in austin so, so. Hey, you, got, you got yourself together for the rest of this <laughs> no. podcast I'm, I'm, out. Out. I'm tapping out yeah. um so anyways it's gonna be 100 103 degrees there? yeah 103 oh. degrees so was it's it the word funky yeah, I think it has something to do with that. <laughs> oh, man. I can't. Meg, I heard that uh, Taylor Swift has a new old album out. <laughs> it's pretty funky. Remember that comic, Funky Winker Bean? No. Yeah, it was a syndicated comic. Oh, okay. I read the comics as a child, the comic pages. I did too, as well. I always tried to draw the There was like two way. good ones, and the rest... Like Marmaduke, never funny. I don't even know mm. what that guy was doing. Family Circus? Mm-mm. No, that's... Ziggy? Like, Foxtrot was good for a while, and then that was kind of like a little mo- more modern. That's a Garfield guy. Gar- Garfield's good. Yeah. yeah. John always trying to keep the lasagna away from him. Yeah. Do you think there's any cats in real life that eat lasagna for fun? Like, Mm-mm. a lot of it? Mm-mm. That would blow out a cat. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, going to have Meg on a roll today, I think. <laughs> All right, um, All right. So, Meg, does that wrap up the summer? Uh, yeah, we're still talking about Under Armour. We just uh, have we moved no, on I to Garfield. I, I think we're good. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Hey, you know what? We just got back from a trip, Robbie. Yeah, it was pretty sick. It was a trip. Trip of a trip. Yeah. We were in California. California. That's how everyone that's cool says it. They and know how to party. We were in Oakland. Um, being at, being athletic. Mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah, thank you. Meg, do you know why he said athletic? No. Because there's a baseball team called the Oakland A's. Mm. Athletics. Uh, for now, sport. I think they're being sold to Las Vegas. So they're, Wait, they lost the Raiders, and now they're going to lose? I think it's like pro- likely. 
Scenario. Oh my! So there, someone's just like whatever Oakland has. Yeah, I think their owner kind of to Vegas. I think their owner kind of sucks. Uh, but mm, yeah, back in the day, Bash Brothers, Jose Canseco, Mark McGuire, those are the days. Just Royden out. Mm. Speaking of Royden, yeah, we just talked to a guy. Uh, anyways, so we were in. Uh, we went to Oakland for an event with Renegade Running and Norda to celebrate the launch of the Norda 002, which we'll talk about in a little bit, trail shoe. For those of you listening, I'm holding it in my hand in front of the camera right yeah. now. Yeah. I have to say that store, just from the stories that you guys posted, looked super cool. Oh, it's, it is cool. It is super what cool. What I like is that it's like a curated collection of shoes. So it's like he carries all the fringe stuff. So there was yeah. like Satisfy. There's even a little bit of Tracksmith there. There was. Brand Black. Uh, I was pretty excited about this one brand from, um, I think it's called Tanuki. That was from Japan. Mm-hmm. There was another one from uh, South Korea that looked cool. Do you remember that one starts with a K? Uh, it was co- Colleague. Colleague, it was yeah. spelled K-L-E-G. Just, just the, like the kind of stuff that's like, oh, that makes running seem just a little bit elevated, a little bit more. Yeah, um, it's definitely a mix of fashion and running for sure. So that's kind of what he like Nike they had like ACG gear. And when and you looked on the that. wall, it was the shoes that that when we get to review we're excited about. Mm-hmm. And less of the shoes like you didn't see kind of like It didn't look like your typical running store where you walk in mm-hmm. and it's your standard yeah. Uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, so if you're in the Bay Area, definitely hit up Renegade Running. And so we got into town uh, around noon on Friday, and then you and I—I I had sprained my ankle the day before. So was it the day before? Yeah, I was like, "How'd you days. do that?" Uh, I was just running camouflage from camouflage rock. Yeah, it was a camouflage rock, as I'd like to say. Meaning, I just didn't see it. But it was—I was a block from my house, running in the street, and I just landed right on a rock. I was doing the Kenvara pro- pros. Mm. So I mean, they are a high stack, but I went, I was like trying them out again because I'm still You're right. My mind is uh-huh. torn on them, and just f- totally bit it on the ground. Flat you know, somebody out, said that we should. Pavement. It shouldn't be. We shouldn't be comparing that to the other plated trainers. We should be car- comparing that to, to the, the shift? shift. But why? That's dumb. I mean, it is maybe more enjoyable than the shift. It is. So they just they want us to compare it to a shoe we like less. Than yeah, the Convara it's like throw? don't compare it to the speed. That's better. Compared to a it's shoe that's not as good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That they also make. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, moving on. But so then, so I rolled it pretty good. It wasn't as, as bad as some other times, but enough to make it big and stiff. And wow, that's. And so we got to Oakland. Going in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, just get out before I can get it back in. That's what she said. And then so we uh, we ended up. Getting into Oakland, and we, I did go go on a sh- we went on a short run about three and a half miles around Lake we were, Merritt. Yeah, Lake Merritt, which is kind of interesting because I I got a flashback that little Fairyland puppet theater thing. I think that was around when I was a kid. Oh, and I think I actually went there. So my mom at <laughs> one point there's lived a puppet theater right there, apparently. right next to the lake, and uh, I, I and so for me there was a couple like where we went to dinner that night is where we used to stop when I was traveling back and forth between my parents. You would get like a bear claw from the bakery that's at the Claremont. And so it was like, there was a little bit of nostalgia going on for me. That's cool. There was, there was people saying that the lake, I heard a lot of people say, it's like, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so amazing. I'm like, eh, it was okay. I think what's for, nice about it, imagine Patterson Park had a big lake in it, our, our Patterson Park. Yeah. Imagine it had a, we would love it. Yeah. Like yeah, there's a pond. Yeah. It's very much small. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, doing hundreds. Yeah. But yeah, it was. I guess it was nice, but I don't know. I there's a many nice places in San Francisco. I guess there you is. have to it's, go over the bridge and stuff. I think it's just a nice if you live around there. Yeah, it's a nice okay. oasis in the city. All right, like you could sense. put a blanket down and sit by the lake. Uh, you can still see skyscrapers by it. Um, yeah. You go camping at one of the tents, many tents they have around there. Yeah, I was telling Meg one of the things I miss about living in California was just when you look up and you see mountains around. And I mean, like, it is cool. Yeah, like I do miss that. Also, the weather—it's nice and cool. Oh in the yeah, mornings. Oh, we showed up and I was yeah. like, "Damn, I forgot my winter coat." So jealous of that. Well, that's the thing. We flew all the way out there and then we went for a run that afternoon to test your ankle and to kind of just see how things were going, and. It was 60 degrees, 
but it was a nice it, zero humidity, yeah. 60 degrees. And it just felt great. Like Robbie got hot in the sun, but then we'd go in the shade and you'd be like, I'm cold. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. And then so that night we had we went out to dinner with um, Victor from Renegade Running, the owner, and then the Norda crew, which were, were like. We met some new people. Yeah. Mo, Dirty Boy. Adam. Adam, Ellis. Hannah. I mean, these people were beautiful. It was. It Thomas really, came back and was like, I was hanging out with male models. I, yeah. I feel like I was. Like, I have never felt so ugly. <laughs> well, oh. first off, my face was falling off. This was a, so this was the worst part about Oakland that I really couldn't get out of my head. Because yeah. I've been taking No that, one could. Ta- <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking that medication that was, like, basically boils your skin off. And then, of course, like, I was like, oh, I should be fine by the time we go on this trip. It was like at the height, like my, it looked like I had lizard skin on my forehead. My nose had like a bright red dot, like right on the end of it. I look like a clown. I'm not going to say you're wrong. Yeah. And it was just (laughs) rough. And I'm meeting all these people that are like, look like I told Robbie, if you were going to choose your avatar for the non real world, you would choose some of these guys to, to be like, okay, I'll, I'll look like that. Oh, yeah, I'm not gay, but if I was there for maybe like 48 <laughs> hours more, it would I love, be... I love that he had to question it. Would be, it. it would be borderline. <laughs> yeah. They're like the most... Like, just, so you got to add yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're just they're just like beautiful people. Like They look like models. And, and they, they are models. I don't even... They don't yeah, look they like it. Models. They actually are. Uh, and like, the best man, part of it I is... I do not belong here. They were all really super nice people. Yeah, I know. I kind of want them to be assholes. I thought they were going to be dicks. Like I thought like we were going to be these like lame you know, people. But they yeah. were so sweet and nice. Like, live up to the stereotype, at least. Maybe just be a little bit pretentious. It sounds like you guys were in the movie Zoolander. I was going to say, we went for a Jeep ride, and we got orange frappuccinos. (laughs) Checks out. Mocha? What is it? Orange mocha frappuccinos. Orange mocha frappuccinos. It was was like that, but they were very down-to-earth and cool. Um, Yeah. And then, so we had dinner, and... A pretty generous amount of wine. Thomas, yeah. Thomas did. Um, <laughs> I felt like maybe I sabotaged my trip. So I started off with a martini at the dinner because, uh-huh. man, I love a good martini. And then Nick from uh, Norda just kept ordering bottles of wine. And I think he knew what he was doing because they were good bottles of wine. Yeah. And we just kept drinking them. Yeah, they were. it wasn't Franzia in a box. <laughs> no, so. but yeah, it was, it was funny Not against because... That. Uh, Willa did ask, cause I said, you know, I, I don't really, you know, we have box wine at home because of the convenience of it. So I'm not really a wine connoisseur. Uh-huh. And she's like asking me questions like, cause I guess they never have box wine up there in Canada or whatever. It's a shame. So she Another was like, the reason not to go to Canada. She's like, is it good? Like, can you tell me about it? And I'm like, I'll tell you, I usually have it after I drink a martini. And so it tastes fine to me. I mean, Boda box, you can't, you really can't go wrong. Yeah. Revolution, Red Revolution. That one's good. Yeah. But, Anyhow. But you know, like the first... And second parts of a wine night are great. And then it's the third part that gets you. So well, I stole that from Mitch Hedberg, so no one called me out on that. All right. Hi, this is Thomas with your first check-in. Hopefully, you're running well right now. You're in a groove. You're feeling it. I'm going to tell you something. I've been wearing cotton T-shirts during my runs. I don't know if it's a flex or just it's just fun to see how filled with sweat they get. But it's not that bad. So I don't know what everybody's talking about with these performance sweat wicking gear you can get by with a t-shirt even this hot muggy weather that we got here on the east coast but you know there's lots of alternatives out there check it out so let's start with what you had for dinner because robbie made a bad choice uh yeah i mean i wouldn't say it's bad but it was like we we, because we had a bunch of appetizers and stuff and then i ordered a scallop dinner but they don't really it's not like long john silvers where they box you up with the scallops it's like um, I mean, mostly he, had like, he had like what three scallops? Yeah, four. Four. But yeah, I think like later on in the night I was hungry, you know. But I mean, it was delicious. The food there was outstanding. I made a last minute choice. I listened to what everybody's ordering, and I was like, mm, "That sounds good." I think I'll have that. Soup du jour. Soup of the day. Um, <laughs> mm, sounds good. Uh, I had the corn ravioli. Yeah, it did look good. It was. You it made the right tasty. decision. And it was nice. It was a good base layer. Yeah. For the bottle and a half of oh. wine you drank? Uh, I'm, Meg, I think I probably drank more you than might a have bottle two. and a half. I think I only had like two glass, three glasses total maybe. So, because I, I knew that it was going to, because of course I forgot my toiletry bag at home. 
Um, I did see that as well. And, if, <laughs> and I had my ibuprofen in there, so I was like, I can't afford to get a headache tonight. Um, That's what you were thinking? You were that clear-headed? I would be like, I feel good. I'll probably feel great tomorrow. <laughs> well, not that, but I, I mean, partly that, but I also knew that, like, that, you know, we had a big day the next day, and I was trying to be responsible. Trying to be responsible. I have to tell you, knowing that the run wasn't starting until, like, 3, Yeah, I was like, Okay. And I was like, and I, literally sometimes when I'm drinking, I'm like, I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I won't wake up at two with a throbbing headache. That's what happened to me when I went with the Faster Bastards at the Orioles game a couple weeks ago. I yeah. was like, let's just do this. Let's oh, just have fun. Horrible idea. See, you were getting funky all day. <laughs> I was. <laughs> funky. <laughs> faster. Faster. Funky. funky faster, faster. Funky. Faster. Funky. Faster. Funky faster. Faster. <laughs> Change the name. Yeah. Reprint the um, shirts. Yeah. So uh, I woke up. And again, I sort of stayed on East Coast time. And I was like, I talked to Megan in the morning. I was like, I'm bent. I'm hurt. Uh -huh. And I was like, I don't, maybe if I just go for a run before the run, I'll clear some stuff out. I'm yeah. like, maybe I'll just do one or two miles. Yeah. So you were like, uh, I want to. And then you're like, I'm out. And then you went and did some like exploring. Yeah, like walking and around the city and stuff like that. But can, can I tell about my alarm that morning? Yeah. So... The night before, when we were going, before we went out to eat, we I was tying my shoes and I looked down. And there was a, a cockroach that mm, was I forgot about this. like halfway under the desk, and so I tried to smack with my shoe, and of course missed because those guys are shifty, especially in the daylight. And which it's always weird when you see a cockroach in the daylight. Here at this hotel, and I get it. We're in a city, like cockroaches happen, whatever. And you may have brought it with you. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> That, Wouldn't that be a trip? Is that a felony? Uh, I think it's fruits you okay. can't bring. All right, yeah. Um, and then so I, so I was kind of like, ah, I wish I would have killed it, obviously, but whatever. So went to bed. Next morning, uh, by the way, I did have a headache, but liquid IV kind of saved me on that one. So I had an extra pack from like Boston in my backpack. Shout out. But so I, so I ended up. I, next morning, I'm like kind of groggy just like feel something on my arm and I like open my eyes and lift up my arm. Sure enough, freaking cockroach is right on my arm. So my alarm that morning was like La Cucaracha. You know what I just realized? Doing a, a, again, a conga line down my arm. You're Wally. <laughs> What's, uh, is he the trash robot? Yeah. I never Ever had a little friend with a cockroach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. Here's the difference between Robbie and I, when I got to the hotel, I found a diamond in my room. Yeah. And I'll get into the dilemma of that in a minute. But Robbie, he goes in his room, he finds yeah. a cockroach. Yeah. And I feel like that's a great. That's the law of attraction right there. Like, thanks. So well, it's, yeah, it's. I did. I struggled with the fact that I found this diamond. And I was like, well, somebody's probably missing it. I should probably turn it in. I'm like, if I turn it in, the hotel people will probably just keep it. Yeah, And then I, I finally got to the point where I was like, I just don't want it on my conscience. I don't care if it's worth 20 grand. I'd rather just turn it in. Or it was cubic zirconium. I, I'm, pr I'm, I'm pretty you sure. You could have it, tested it. It's I didn't impossible know why didn't to tell. It. No, there's a Google had a way to test it. It's like apparently if it sinks or something. It's But anyway, so I, I decided I just don't want it on my conscience. So the very last day when we're leaving, take it down. And I said, I found this in my room. And I, she's like, meh, okay. And didn't even make a fuss of it. And then I thought to myself, I'm getting into the cab later. She never asked me what room I was in. Yeah. She didn't ask me what my name was. That, that's her that, diamond now. Yeah, she said, thanks for the tip. Yeah, yeah, it just went right into the employee grab backs. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. and, and then I never found that cockroach. So because I forgot my toiletry bag, I didn't have my glasses. So I can't see, you know, further than two feet in front of me. So it, it scrambled off me was like in, uh, in the sheets Ugh. and I was like well I'm getting up now and it was 6 a.m. I didn't really want to get up but I I mean I wasn't trying to other cut, crazy, cuddle up with a cockroach other crazy thing is coffee shops don't open until eight yeah that was a weird thing eight and nine a.m. was when the coffee shops there's like 13 coffee shops around us and no one opened before eight o'clock I don't understand that. I, when do you, I don't need coffee when I've been awake for two hours. I, I, need it when I, I think maybe up. they're on a different uh, schedule than us over like there. Like they're right. late, more laid back. Maybe. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah. So eventually I did make it out of bed, but I spent a long time 
in bed uh, trying to like just drink water. And I was like, I'll just try to do one or two miles. And I ended up going out and doing five miles just because it felt so good out there with the temps and just going nice and easy around Lake Merritt. And Robbie, you were doing a different kind of adventure. Oh, yeah. I just like went walking around and asked at one of those coffee shops, asked someone where I should go. And he was like, oh, this is my first day here, which should have been the first first clue that I was going to be sent in the wrong direction. And he was like, if you just go up this road, blah, blah, blah. So I went up that road and it was nobody except for a bunch mm. of tent cities and was it like crazy Max? people. Did you feel like you had entered the Thunderdome? Yeah, because there was just like... Like the most random assortment of trash, it almost looked like the code of the, of our you know universe was messed up, and there was just like random pieces of trash that didn't make sense together. I'm like, where, how do you even find this? My many favorite thing was disparate there was, things. There was a pretty large size Barbie bed, just on the sidewalk. Yeah, I took did a nap you sleep on in that. it? Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I went to celebrate the Barbie movie coming yeah. out, and but there was a uh, yeah, just like vehicles that. I don't know, maybe they were still vehicles. I don't, they obviously didn't work, but just a lot of stuff. And so anyways, I walked for like an hour and <coughs> came across nothing, nothing to even walk into. And so came back and then someone's like, oh, yeah, you got to go down to Grand Lake. So I rented a bike and drove it. And then and actually were, was where cool people hung out. Like, maybe it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, the kind of bike we liked. An e-bike? Oh, no, it was like the hard-to-bike city bikes where it's just like they go two miles an hour, but you're using all your Cause like like effort. Because it's like a 50-pound bike. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember in Colorado Springs, though, how fun those were? Oh, that was the best. Yeah, that, that was, was the so e-bike much fun. One. I know. It's like cheating. And we accidentally parked outside the zone that they're in, and so it, yeah. it just ended up charging us for like <laughs> 20 hours. hours. Yeah. Um, that was good. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, though. I felt like I was an ET uh-huh. in that moment. Yeah. We just yeah, the whole kids are going down the block. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon so, sitting in the basket in the front with a blanket over his head. I think he's still waiting there. <laughs> yeah. But um, he, he never went home. Yeah. So then later that day, we showered up, mm-hmm. put on running gear. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I brought some hip stuff because that place is hip. Yeah. You showered up to go run again? Yeah. Did I do that? I think I did. I did because you know why? I didn't want to smell. <laughs> oh, I'm maybe fair. talking to people. Yeah, I kept taking showers and changing shirts because I forgot my deodorant. Like, Again. why didn't you just go buy some toiletries? Uh, There's a Target by the. I hotel. did. I did, and then I forgot to get deodorant. Okay. And so <laughs> I. Wait, did I even buy? That? I think I just bought more liquid IV. Oh, <laughs> put that in his armpits. <laughs> I was actually thinking that I was like trying to MacGyver stuff around the hotel room being like if I put this and this stuff together what if I just hold a bar of soap in my armpit yeah like would that actually work as deodorant like if I just did like the hand lotion mixed with the soap mixed with liquid IV pineapple would that create tell me you tried it rub a little cockroach on it I didn't okay I just brought an extra shirt um anyways so yeah we headed over to Renegade and it was kind of cool because we had a charter bus yeah. to take us to the trailhead. And we filled up that bus. Oh, yeah. So the, the group that was there filled a bus, and we're like, mm, okay, that's pretty good. It was like road rules. And then we had to tell them about the trip, the turn. So this there's a lot of switchbacks up this mountain. And the one guy that was on the bus with us who ended up winning the race, I remember his name, Matt Seidel. No relation to Molly. But he was like kind of sketched out he's like i was wondering if how we're how actually going to get do out this because there. there's one turn that's literally a hairpin the, like. i mean <laughs> there's one that we couldn't do so they went a different direction because it was so tight like we're going up into the hill so you're going up and there's these hairpin turns and then there's downhill on the other side of it they came and we finally got to this one turn and i mean it's just the bus like, had to stop had to back up it was like the austin powers meme. Mm-hmm. yeah nice and and we're near a cliff, right? Yeah, like kind of a like a house and a cliff yeah. situation. Like, I was like, I'm down? just now looking out the windows. So I'm like, maybe we're not going for a run today. <laughs> or maybe we're going to have to run up to the run, which this is up a hill. It's pretty big. But the bus guy got it through. I still don't know how he did that. And that when we got up there, nuts. there's probably another, I don't know, how many people do you think extra were it that drove there? 50 maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So a nice size group. 40. Yeah, there's a lot of people. So we basically, I guess this is called, was it called Redwood Regional? Was that the park? I think that's I what think they that's said. Right. I think yeah. so, yeah. 
So you start at the top of this mountain and then you just run down for 1.6 miles to the bottom and then you're in this like redwood grove, which is amazing. I've never seen redwoods before. So that was that, oh, those, those, are awesome. those won't yeah. even get you excited. Those were oh, they were like tiny ones oh. compared to like if we took you over to Mar to Marin, uh -huh. you get the ones that are so wide at the bottom you could they can cut a, a tunnel through them. Oh, that's I thought like, those are sequoia. That's redwoods too. They do that. You got me. Oh, I, I thought yeah. it's one or the other. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, it was I cool. Thought, aren't sequoias redwoods? They're not. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I, don't know. I, th I think you might be right, but I, I, mean, I think it's both of them. And anyway, it's huge over there. Like, like that's where the real, they did the movie uh, Empire Strikes Back. Or oh. no, uh, Return of the Jedi. Oh, when they were in the Endor Forest. Oh, they really, that is where they shot it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it did look like that. So sequoias are the largest trees with the largest volumes okay then the, the redwood is the tallest ah okay, okay. the gotcha. sequoia ones yeah. are the ones that will blow your mind I c yeah I would love because they're that. still tall maybe they're not quite as tall as a redwood by yeah. the way my dad thought it was a good idea in our backyard as a kid to plant three redwood trees <laughs> and it's not like we had like an acre it was <laughs> like you know a smaller yeah. lot and when we went back and i told you megan and i visited there we're in california i looked at them because when i was a kid right they look tall, but they weren't that tall. They were like a little bit taller than my dad. Yeah. Now they're like 30, no 40 feet in, no in the air. There's no house anymore. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. The neighbors were so pissed when you planted them because they're like, it's going to, the roots are going to destroy oh, yeah. our pipes and stuff. I, I'm sure that these trees have wrecked havoc on the. For uh, sure. Uh, oh, yeah. So when, so the beginning of that run, <laughs> I, I'll tell my story now. Okay. Thomas tried to get me to tell this story during the live podcast. And I was like, dude, you got to. I can't do this in front of 80 people. Like with eyeballs. <laughs> now I'm nervous for this. Too close of proximity to the actual event. All right, second check-in. Man, my skin got destroyed from this uh, medication I had to use to help with some of the sun damage I had. And uh, all I can keep thinking about now is how much coverage I can get with my hat. Now, I'm not going to go crazy like Robbie and some of these guys who are sporting the Legionnaire all the time. I like it, but it's not... I don't know if it's my vibe. So I've been rocking a bucket hat, putting on the sunscreen, putting on a regular baseball hat and trying to cover as much of my face as I can with it. And uh, just be careful out there because I'll tell you what, you do not want to be in the position I was where my face was just peeling off in front of people. It was, it was, it was nasty. Before, I, on all my adventures and stuff, I forgot to eat lunch. So I was, I had like 30 minutes before the run started and I needed to grab something to eat. So I, there's a pizza shop by the running store I was like, oh, I'll just eat two slices of pizza real quick. Like what right, like right before the run. Like forty-five minutes before, and so it was, and it was like New York style pizza, but not that good. And five dollars a slice. Can we talk about Jeez. that? Yeah. And so I ate the pizza, whatever, felt fine until my foot came off the ground for the first step of the run. <laughs> and you I'm, know what's coming. I'm, yeah, I do. I'm running downhill. And it's like a steep downhill. So it's that pounding. Like it's almost like you can't even run. And so, yeah, it's just jo Jostle City. Well, if your bowels were clean, you could run. Like um, I had no problem running yeah, down. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't carrying around uh, mozzarella cheese inside of me like a dairy truck. And so I ended up, <laughs> I was talking to my one friend who was there. And I was like, dude, I got it. I, I got to stop. I got to pull over. And there was these a bathroom there because there was a girls camp or something at the <laughs> halfway down the mountain. It sounds weird. It sure does. But it's, it was, you know it was, it was girls called camp. girls camp. It oh, said yeah. it on the sign. I don't right. even know what that means. And you're like, this looks like a good place to stop. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it was named by Molly crew <laughs> girls, girls, girls camp. And so we, but I, so I was like, sweet, go to the bathroom. Totally locked. Like both doors. I was like, and I was like, I couldn't remember if there was a bathroom at the top of the hill, but we were already like half a mile down. It was so and steep. I'm like, he's at that, that like, yeah, it's mm. just like, <laughs> it was like, it, I just knew it was going to happen at some point. I was like, I don't know how long I can do this. So I kept running some more. I was like, there's no, there's just no way. So I pulled off on another trail that was going up the mountain and ran like 50 yards up there. And I was just like, and that's the that's it doing that and uh making sure the gopro wasn't turned on while everything was going down the well the, the other thing was there wasn't a lot of stuff like there's eucalyptus leaves but you know what they look like they're like kind of crescent shape yeah <laughs> Not I, I do know that very well <laughs> yeah 
I wouldn't uh, say the best uh, situation for that. It was funny because at the end of the run, this guy went to shake Robbie's hand. I said, you probably don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I, well, I don't know. I don't think I, because I didn't tell you till. No, you told me on the way up yeah. when we turned around at the bottom. Oh, so, cause oh, yeah. Wait, so you go down and then you have to go all the way back it was up? A, yeah, it was oh. a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Meg, it was, it was a, it was, it was a steep, so it was fun going down because you can just kind of let your legs go and you're just cruising for about a mile on 1.6 to get to the bottom or was yeah, it 1.4? 1.6, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so we get to the bottom, there's this bridge. I mean, it's gorgeous. You're going down, you're in like tall trees, streams, just gorgeous foliage it's just like yeah beautiful and there's you know i don't know 100 of us going down and so like you see people it's just like up ahead there's people yeah they weren't annoyed at all yeah um and then so we got we took a break at the bridge down there and then turned around and it was a race back up the top of the mountain uh top male and female one that's when the race started yeah was from the bottom from the bottom up so and it was was it 500 feet over one it was like 500 feet, I think, or over, 600 feet over. of elevation straight up. I mean, it's over. on Strava. But yeah, maybe, maybe more it, than that. It, it felt straight up. So how long did it take the fastest person? Um, that dude, he runs this trail every day. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, this is my home court. Like, this is where I run all the time. I, I know um, the woman who won. Yeah. You, know, you know the woman who won was? Yeah. She was ran. Dara's wife. In nine like a 915 pace I think for I think up up that's in, impressive or maybe, maybe my it was, overall no, that it was a 915 are you sure it wasn't the overall pace no it wasn't no because I she showed me their splits going up as 915 that's really impressive it, so it was basically like gun road okay. but longer mm. like it was so that kind of steep with like multiple false endings <laughs> and dirt <laughs> and dirt and dirt so you're you know you're always slower on yeah. trails speaking of which yeah it was really cool Durs, who we've interviewed before and you might know him from workaholics and other Holmes. movies um uh he came out and made the trip and brought his wife and that was a lot of fun we'll get into some of that later but uh ran the trails and you know he he downplayed his running but he he kept He's like a, she's good but she he kept He's like, this is my type of run, four miles. But I mean, he's an athlete. Yeah, he he did well coming yeah. up. But we, yeah, and, um, sorry. So we ran in the Nordo 002, and I guess we can talk about it real quick. Yeah. Might as well, since we ran in it. Okay, so, features are Dyneema upper, mm-hmm. Vibram midsole, same outsole as the 001, which is a nice Vibram uh, outsole. This one's a little more nimble, lower stack. They even made a joke. They were like, and you can hear this podcast probably Monday, but um, they made a joke about how every they like to go the opposite direction of the industry. Mm. So everybody's getting thicker, which Megan loves, and they decided to go out with a thinner shoe. And I, I have to say, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I mean, if I'm honest, I still think I like the 001 better, but... That's just, but they're not supposed to be, it's not the second version of that shoe. It's just a different shoe. Right. So it's a different a f- tool. Yeah. A lighter, faster shoe. But yeah, for a lighter, faster trail shoe, it was nice. Um, Especially on that soft pack. Yeah. This was fine. Vibram outsole, mega grip with light base. Really nice. I'm going to make a prediction right now. Uh-huh. You know how Hoka kind of caught on with celebrities and then yeah. the rest of the world was like, oh, I got to have Hoka. It's like, I think mm-hmm. Kardashians or somebody wore it out. Uh, Britney Spears. Britney Spears. I'm going to tell oh, you, I think that Kanye the Norda 001 is going to be the next, okay. like, it running fashion I'm into it. shoe that pe- you're going to see people wearing all over the place. I mean, it's it's a little elitist because it is more expensive. Yeah. But their whole point is, like, you're making it with Dyneema that's going to last forever. Well, they're one athlete because we did the podcast and we asked their one, obviously, he's, you know, it's their athlete, but Max, uh, I forget his last name. He he's said he has a thousand miles in the in one of them. Yeah, Max Max was another one. So he he you know has a shirt off, has the best tattoos like you ever saw. Like just yeah, it's like it's like you know he's someone who just goes in and is like give me that tattoo off the wall, but they're all like they're all cool. So I'm like, how does that even work? Yeah, like are you just that lucky of a person that you can always get cool no, tattoos? No, another handsome fella. 
Anyway. Did he um, also have washboard abs? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, all these people are ridiculous. I think they had a little oil station just for those guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, when they saw. But, yeah, um, yeah so we, we ended up running. We finished that run. All went back to the store. We ended up doing the interview with the Nordic crew and going over the shoe, Nordic philosophy, how they started, the fact that Nick and Will are married, and this is their joint project together. Um, a lot of stuff. It's definitely... You should listen to the podcast. We had some fun with it. And we it was a podcast where we got to drink during it. So we were uh, having a couple of the Modelo seltzer things. Yeah, like the flavor Modelo's now, which I still think I'm an OG kind of guy. Just give me the fresh lime and Modelo. A little too, like, salty, was, malty for me, maybe. I think after the run, I enjoyed it because it was, it was salty. It was, it was good. It was don't like get a me wrong. margarita beer. Yeah. Some, I don't know. Yeah. But, um, and then they had a taco guy there. Um, that was phenomenal. Yeah, and like a DJ, and just kind of hung out and talked to people, and had a great time. I, there was a lot of people who listened to the podcast who were there, so thank you for coming out. Yeah, I saw some grit shirts out there. We saw, I saw the Path projects. Uh, one of the guys had the Path projects tank top on. Uh, yeah, the the Believe in the Run one. Yeah, yeah. dirt the dirt division. Yep, I think we should play on that. Um, anyway, I um, forget his name. I talked to him for a while. I forget everyone's names, but. Yeah. I remember their faces. The See, one and I remember the people that I'm the opposite. Normally I'm bad. Yeah. But I was talking I was talking to um the dirty boy. Uh huh. Was talking to Mo. Was talking to Ellis. Yeah. Talking to that crew. I actually remember all Max. those names, but I think the well the one guy who came, I was like he's like, Hey, he's like I was like, I remember you. You were in Boston and you were wearing that outdoor research jacket that I really liked. And I was right. But I didn't know his name, but I remember we talked about the ja- a jacket he's, he's he was wearing in Boston. Guy. Yeah, um, but his name's like was he the one wearing the path tank top? Uh, no, that was someone else. He was wearing the John G. Sling bag though. Shout out to John G. Sling bag. Did you get one of those? Not yet. They said they sent you one, dude. You got it. It's got porch pirated because they yeah. said it showed up. It landed there July first. Uh, there's no, <laughs> there's no way, right? I guess we'll figure it out. Uh, you know what? Our neighbors do have a package for me that I haven't gotten oh, yet. That's probably what it is. But I don't know. Anyways, get the John G. Sling bag. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I ended up having this really deep conversation about creativity and kind of like philosophy of uh, aesthetic and all that stuff with uh, the Dirty Boy, who is his name is Adam, but he goes by the Dirty Boy if you want to look him up uh-huh. on Instagram. And he's a filmmaker and does a lot of films for like satisfy all the brands like CLA, all the brands that are on that fringe of running that are kind of like the, the cool kids. Yeah. He does a lot of those videos. He also does music videos, steep in the graffiti culture of LA, grew up and lived in LA, went to art school in San Francisco. I'm going to have him on the podcast. Cause I just thought when you have somebody who has such a strong opinion on that creative stuff, yeah, it, it's just fascinating to me. Um, and then Mo, who's a photographer, insane photos you should check them out do you know his um it's like most i don't because i'm losing my mind right now because do you know when does this happen to you on google or chrome when you just get signed out of everything no do you know what i'm talking about meg yeah but you can just sign back in no but then it asks you for all your authentication codes for like all the numbers i know that doesn't happen to me this stuff with facebook and everything Mm. no just have them send it to you in a text yeah it's and just it, annoying because now I'm, I can't get into my Instagram, my, all this stuff without authenticating it. Uh, and I'm try- on the podcast trying to get into it. I'm like, I was just an hour ago. I was in all these things. Yeah. Try your phone. Might be able to get on with that. Phone's fine. Um, <sighs> anyway, Mo is really interesting because he's an incredible photographer, Meg. And uh, I guess we can put a link to his, both Dirty Boy and his uh, Instagram in the description. But he... Um, He's also a helicopter pilot, a scuba instructor, and worked for NASA. Again, not in, real people. In their yeah, pool. What are these credentials? Yeah. Yeah. Another handsome man. Yeah, yeah, like like it's like they got it all. And they're traveling the world taking photos of people running in weird places. Yeah. Sounds like a sweet gig. Yeah. Anyway, so we hung out with a bunch of people. It was great. And then we You and I. We were gonna shower, but I didn't. um oh yeah so we went to a beer garden hung out there had had some burgers yeah we had the burger called the drive-thru yeah which i found out later that burger place all those are supposed to be copies of 
different places that you can get burgers. So the drive through was supposed to be like an in and out burger. Oh, it was similar. Okay. So if you got one of the other ones, that was one of the other famous burgers in California. Okay. So cool. they're basically just paid. And we got some sort of sour beer that was good. Yeah. And then we hung out with uh, Anders Holm. And yeah, before, we, before we got there, May, we go back to the hotel. It's 9.50. And so we go up to the bar and they're acting like, oh, crap. I'm like, I'm sorry, is, it, is the bar closed? I'm like, no, we're open until 10.30. Oh, yeah. So I was like, okay, uh, do you want us to go someplace else? Because it seems like, she's like, no, that's fine. If you guys just want a drink, we'll do a drink for you. So I order a martini. Robbie gets a Paloma. Mm-hmm. And they start, like, shutting down the bar, yeah. like, immediately. It was, like, 9.50. Yeah. And so Durs says, hey, we're done with dinner. You guys want to hang out, grab a beer or something. And we're like, yeah, we're at the hotel bar. If you get here soon, you could probably get a drink. But of course, they didn't get there till like it was probably ten yeah. twenty at that point. Dude, I'm done with the. Uh, I, I just can we have bars that stay up until two? Just give me well, that's like a novelty now. Remember, it used to be a thing that like any bar you walk into, it will be expect an expectation that it's always open until two. Now, I don't even know if I've been in a bar that's open until two since the pandemic. It's usually midnight, right? Yeah, now it's like midnight. Yeah. So well, when, why did the rules change when by two we, hours? So we went to the other uh, brewery bar that was actually kind of nice because it had fire yeah. pits and stuff. How late was that? How late were we there? Um, we were there till 1130 maybe. And yeah. they were doing last call at like 11, I think. No, that was last call for food. No, no, they did last call for alcohol too. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, anyways, it's just a thing where I'm like, Man, as a country, kind of got weak on the <laughs> yeah. <I'll laughs> you go to late Ger- night drinking front. You go to Germany. <laughs> oh yeah, or Russia. Yeah, but they like start eating dinner at like eleven p.m. and then your night like starts. Yeah, but like, why would you if you're a bar, and the and the bar had patrons? Why That's, are you kicking them out? I don't, I don't know. People don't want to be up that late. I, I guess know. so. Anyway, so then yeah, basically that was it. Then we. Next morning, went to bed. Next morning, we did go to bed. Home. Not together. No, he went with a cockroach. Yeah, I went with the. I did. I changed rooms. Although I was on the border about changing rooms because I was like, uh, do I just like hang out with the cockroach tonight and just call it a that I'm way? Like, that yeah, way. Are, that way are don't you have sure to... the rest of the hotel doesn't have cockroaches? But I, my oh, exactly. Well, I didn't feel like packing up all my stuff because as soon as I get a hotel room, I'm like, it looks oh, like I've been we... living there for three weeks because I just my stuff's everywhere and so i was i was like i really don't want to pack all this stuff up just for just in a way it's like letting the cockroach win you know it's like oh you pushed me out of here you claim this territory I mean, and he, now did win. I, we, he won he did he's probably like look, talking to his other cockroach friends he's not even that it was like uh, a half a size too he probably like, walked up and he's like look i can get that motherfucker out of here yeah I mean, so what you went down to the front desk and you're like i need a new room there's a cockroach in mine yeah teenage cockroach because that's what was he, uh, teenage cockroach. I'm just a teen. What, what was their response to that? Were they like, oh, yeah, no problem. We'll oh, she, another one. She feigned horror. She feigned a Listen look of hor- horrification. Maiden, babe. Yeah, they, the staff there was not. Oh, so this is the I best call, part. It, yeah. Caring. Well, caring. the fact that you hand them a diamond, they're like, meh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the. I told her that, and she was, acted like she was, you know, terrified to hear such a thing. <laughs> and I was like, "Well, you know, whatever. I don't care." Well, you have to explain the water policy before you get into this. That's what I'm getting into. Yeah, but what's the water policy? What do you? Uh, two bottles per room. So, well, you get there, and they have these aluminum bottles that are sealed, like so. It's like paid for water. Yeah. But then there's like, hey, to save on this stuff, there's water refill stations on every floor. Oh, I didn't hear him say that. Oh, okay. Okay. So. Yeah, you're supposed to refill your bottle once okay. you get it. So maybe you should have moved. I didn't know there were refill stations. I just would have done that the whole time I was there. That's what I did. The morning I woke up with a hangover, I went to that water refill station oh, like I did, 10 I times. Did, I didn't know there was one. Okay, so there's two water bottles when you get in your room. Mm-hmm. So I switched. There, were, there weren't two water bottles in my room the first time or the second time when I switched rooms. So I went down the desk, um, and I was I went for a walk and came back in. It's like an hour after I switched rooms, and I said, "Can I get two waters to take up in the room?" She's like, "Oh, well, those are those are four dollars each." And I was like, "Lady, I just changed rooms because of a cockroach, and you're gonna sit there and look at me with a straight face." You said this to her? 
No, no. no. Explain. Can you give the two ways, like in your head? How you this is it? in my head part. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, you're gonna sit there looking at me with a straight face and tell me that it's four dollars per water bottle. I didn't have to put up a fight because she. I paused, and she said, "Oh, she's like, well, you changed rooms, isn't there?" Wasn't there two water bottles? I said, there weren't any water bottles in my room. She said, okay. And then grabbed two bottles for me. Nice. But the, yeah. So it kind of got resolved before I could put up a fight. Okay. But in your head, you were ready to take her down. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's no way I was going to (laughs) pay. It's crazy. So anyways, so that was this, that's all. Did you have that water bottle with you too? I did. Yeah. But I didn't know there's refill stations. Okay. This was the greatest thing. So right on the other side of the elevator. Yeah. With the water refills. What? Yeah, and I like where we walked out every t- time. Well, you walked this way. The water okay. station was that way. So I, the morning that I kind of was a little hungover, I was like, "Thank God these are here." I literally went to that machine like five times, <sighs> just drinking water. Probably thought you you had feelings for it by the end of the day. Well, it was nice because I learned the exact pressure to leave my door open so that I didn't have to pee. I, was, I did like that. And then like I was walking barefoot around in the Ew. thing. Well, I, it was like pajamas. I was like getting out of bed, going, filling a water bottle and getting back in bed. You can't be walking around barefoot in a hotel. I was. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway. I think you could. <laughs> that was a little tip. Yeah. So then we boogied out. All right. Final check in. So making sure that you got the sunscreen on, making sure that you got the proper gear on. Hopefully it's not see-through. If we haven't gotten to that part in the podcast yet, you'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, You don't want to see-through shorts. And uh, making sure you're hydrated, as always is this summer. It's going to be a theme this summer. Megan on the hydration tour, doing it with Megan Featherston, with Scratch and everybody. So make sure you're drinking up. And it doesn't mean that you drink while you're running, but make sure you are drinking while you're running. But it's also... After you run, make sure you're replenishing and getting all that moisture in so that you can recover for the next run. So check in with you next week. And I think it was all in all a successful trip. I didn't lose anything while I was there. Oh, that what I about that had. family that like just destroyed both our it's, flights? I, I think the story is more interesting to us. I don't know if we need to talk about it. All right. But it was yeah, just a couple plain etiquette things. Clean up your area when you're leaving, one. And two, don't stand up. And go toward the front until your row is go in a oh, order. Yeah. Like when it's your turn to get off the plane, it exits. That's when you get off the plane, right of the plane, left of the plane, and while the, right fl- of the plane, while the flight the is in motion, don't get up the entire <laughs> flight and pace back and forth, checking on your family that, by the way, are grown adults. Uh, Ten rows in front of you, and keep hitting my shoulder every time you walk past me thirty times during. Uh, Five hour flight, but it looked like they built a hamster nest of trash. It did. I mean, there, I remember this one X Files episode where this guy could climb through a. Uh, do you remember that one where he could like this guy? He could like stretch his fingers out and get through a vent, and he could basically creep into any like place, mm. and then it would you know eat people or whatever. And well, when they when Mulder finally found him, it was like that. It was like a nest of just trash and stuff like paper and, and then everything it looked that's what it reminded me of yeah that's we saw it and i'm just like this is the cruelest thing to leave for the flight attendants and the people that are working and the saddest thing is i think that plane just turns around and goes back like so they when we got off the plane they're like our flight to san francisco will be boarding soon and i'm like we just got from san francisco to baltimore so they're gonna reload that plane and fly it all the way back yeah to San Francisco. That's Fran. how it works. Oh. So this was season one, episode three. His name's Eugene Victor <laughs> Rooms. And <laughs> sorry, just in case anyone's trying to watch this episode, it's the episode's called Squeeze. And it's uh, during the f- first season, kind of an epic episode within X Files. But, anyways, if you wanted to see, watch, go to the fast forward to the end of that episode to see what that aisle looked like. I after can't wait left. to see how many people do this, Robbie. All right. And if you live like that, don't send us pictures. <laughs> Let's see if I can find the nest. Um, <laughs> okay, Robbie's computer's working again. Yeah. So happy. Well, <laughs> none of my social media is, but yeah. that's good. I don't need that. All right, Meg. So what's what's, yeah, what's like going on with your running? You? Uh, oh yeah, you're doing some stuff. What am I doing? Well, you found out your results from Boston. Oh yeah, those were interesting. Um, I had a call with. Uh, 
some of the guys from the lab yesterday at New Balance, and they kind of talked us through some of the results that we got. What was cool and is what I sus- suspected. What was that word? <laughs> Just a tough one for me. <laughs> was that um, the SC trainer, we all performed better in the SC trainer over the 1080. V2? Yes. Okay. SC trainer V2 versus the 1080 V12. Um, and Do you think there's any placebo effect? I, I, I actually said that on the call. I was like, how much of this is possibly like psychology is involved because I like this shoe better. So I feel like I'm going to perform better just because of that. And he said there is a lot of that. Like there's, oh, wow. they've done that tests case. that really where they say like this shoe is heavier, but people actually performed better in it, even though in their minds they're like, I didn't perform well in this one because, you know, X, Y, Z. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so you're saying there's proof that it's accurate, not, uh, not influenced by your brain. Well, it's because it, in that case, if they say it's heavier and you still perform, there's essentially well. like a million variables. Okay, like there's biomechanics, there's VO twos, there's psycho, like there's a million things you could look into. Do you, Do you remember? So after you did the testing, do you remember what you did last Tuesday? Uh, was that last Tuesday or not last Tuesday? I don't. What did I do? Was it Fourth of July? Oh, yeah. Was that last Tuesday? Yeah. Time is really getting weird. So you did the testing. You you uh, did better in the SC trainer, trainer too. He basically explained to me that I had a pretty high. Well, we didn't test VO two maxes. We just tested VO twos. I had pretty high, but I think like really terrible biomechanics is what I got from it. So, so the chick- is it the chicken wing? The chicken wing isn't the go to optimal probably, for, probably not. for elite athletes. It's probably like you're I think gonna have it to watch videos of, of like how the other people run. I have a bunch of skeletal videos that we're going to include in the recap. So you can so see my gonna see chicken arms. Oh, yeah. Wow. All right. So you made it back from Boston. We kind of have a little bit of that, and there's going to be a video coming out that yeah. kind of walks you through. But I, I really enjoyed, you did a couple of reels that I thought were fun. One that broke the internet? Well, the ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Yeah. The, see, it's not really fair you broke the internet with that one and are taking credit because that we broke the internet with that exact video. I know, but I ago. knew it was going to work and I put to a good tune. So you did. I count yeah. it. You did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that'll be out. How I want to say how many total soon after did this. we already talk about this? you making it rain and getting the money? Yeah. We talked about it last podcast. We okay. recorded after the 4th of oh, July. Okay. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So then you're training those kind of stepping up a notch right now. Seems like you're doing um, doubles or something. Yeah, he has me doing doubles. Whoa, doubles? Yeah. yeah, like hard ones, though, like on yeah. our hard days. It's doubles. Like tomorrow's a double, right? Yeah, so What's tomorrow the will be three by two miles at just under six pace. And um, wow. then like three miles in the afternoon. In the afternoon? Oh, it's like 93 degrees. Tomorrow. I know. I've been, I've just been running home she's from the office. She's going to be in okay, Austin. Gonna she's going to be in no, no, Austin, no. though. I run from here home. Oh, home. Okay. But she's, she's going to be going to Austin, which is 101 right. and stuff right Good now. heat training. So... Go ahead. I was going to ask you, so Megan's doing, what are the repeats again? How many? Three by two. Three miles. No, no. Three by two miles. Oh, three, okay. Yeah. Two miles at a 550. Yeah. Right. And, and the, he's giving her easier paces because it's hot. Could you right now do one mile at 550, you think? Yeah, you could. Um, maybe. During a workout. Like, During a workout. Yeah. Like I'm so like, I mean, okay, go Robbie. Like you get a three mile warm up, you run a 550 and then cool down it would be pretty brutal you could do it i don't think i could do it you could probably do it i I don't it'd have to it'd have to be a steep downhill (laughs) maybe roller skates (laughs) yeah like i don't know like gravity leave earth for a couple minutes if you'd said two years ago i'd say yeah maybe i got a shot like in and it was on a track like you're like warm up then we're gonna try one mile at 550 at a track i gotta ask meg real quick Mm. Have you been running in the shade of light posts? <laughs> that sounds like a secret passage, like like if you belong yeah. to a secret society. Yeah. Have you been running in the shade of a lamppost? Yeah. I texted Robbie when he was in California because I, I had a double <laughs> on Friday. And so I went out in the afternoon. It was like bright sunshine. And I found myself looking at the streets and the telephone poles. And I was like, God damn it. Freaking Robbie. <laughs> yep. Just and then every once in a while, I'd like run under one. Yeah. I'm like, this is doing shit. What am I doing? But I'm it, losing my mind. 
I, I was testing out this morning as I was walking back from driving my kids off of school. Okay, what street are you running down that where it aligns? I, I was just like trying to, it was just like the way that the sun, so it was going See, like that's Fleet the thing. Street, like Fleet Street, like Our back city towards is home. Set up east to west. Yeah, but if it's like, as long as the sun is still coming up, yeah. it's the light posts are longitudinal. That's what I'm saying. It's east and west. Yeah. Like not every city, some cities oh, yeah, are not right. orientated the right. way ours are. Right. Our streets go like dead east, dead west. Well, if you're in a city, you're going to have both. Yeah, you could run north yeah, and south. As long as you have a grid. <laughs> <laughs> um, it could be tilted. <laughs> you don't know. But And then so I was testing it, and it, it just depends how long, how far between the light posts are. But I was like, man, this is covering probably 70% of my body when I'm in the in the shade of the lamppost. Yeah. And because the, the reason, the way I figured this out was last, oh, this first summer grid we did, I, I used to run out to Dundalk to pick up my kids from daycare. So yeah. it was like a six or seven mile run yeah. in the afternoon. And there's no shade out there, you know? Yeah. So oh, yeah. So that's, and the light posts are pretty, cl- are a lot closer between because they still have like telephone poles and everything. And so I was, I was able to get more shade going that way. And I was like, I think this is working. But I had a couple of people, several people send me pictures or tag me in photos of them running in lamp push light push <laughs> i think you're gonna get more now i know and people are gonna do it on purpose um shade brigade i think that's what i was oh my I think God. that was the name for it shade brigade with your legionnaire yeah. hats if you do it with a legionnaire hat and and, and a pole, telephone pole and somehow incorporate a pigeon or a raccoon in there yeah you completed the challenge um the the other thing that uh i tested this week mm-hmm. was i got the new tracksmith what um strata oh, strata's and I go for a run. God, the singlet and the shorts are so light and airy. And the singlet feels amazingly breezy. Like, it's a really nice, lightweight oh, yeah. uh, it's gear. It's one like, of my favorite singlets. It's practically like running naked. Um, and when I got home, I had worn the white shorts that are, are pretty thin. And um, I got home, and Megan uh, saw something. I mean, they are... Yeah, they are completely see through. I was like, I cannot believe you were just running in public in those, like they, like it's just Ro- out, Robbie. It's it's not like there's, like, you would have to squint and go, what is that? <laughs> yeah, it was like it's your penis. Yeah, <laughs> I might need to see a photo just to confirm. Like I said, it's like a spring roll. That's what somebody else said. Photo or it's not. I said I have an eyewitness. Yeah, um, it, it looked like a spring roll. From the frozen section? No. Oh. Do they have them in the frozen section? Oh, yeah. I only buy fresh. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Old Philly cheesesteak spring roll. Yeah. Um, they. <laughs> so I got home. Megan with it, sauce. literally says you can never wear those shorts again. I was and like, you're like, you can't be safety. out in public in those. Like, no, that's a crime like, against it is. The children, probably. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because they're at the same level of height as you. So I, imagine running past a kid. They probably just have memories i literally was like did you pass anyone like did anyone see you i did see some people i was like this is like you're never allowed to wear those man it it you're gonna be on a site soon you could see and that when i say you could see details like you'd be able like you know michael jackson had to submit his thing for as a submit he had he had to provide photos of his genitals wait really yeah you didn't know about that for fun or for no oh, because he's getting accused of molesting a kid and they're like describe his penis and he ha- apparently had a mark on his no way gang that was identifiable. He had identifying characteristics yeah. well i tell you what if he just worn these shorts they would have never had to ask him to come in wow because i will tell you you could see details like you could see you could see I, like it is as close to being naked as you could possibly be. Yeah. yeah. You basically were. Yeah. So what You're happened was King of Pop. It's very light <laughs> white material anyway. And then I sweat it because it was like 90 yeah. degrees and 90 uh, humidity or whatever. It probably wasn't that bad. It was, what was it like yesterday morning? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was warm enough that you sweat a lot. It's like, it's like invisible, like reverse invisible ink. It's like it, when it, when you get it wet, it shows off like the secret message underneath. Exactly. Mm. I also felt like it was the king, the emperor's new It was not a clothes. secret message. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> look at these great new tracksmith shorts. And you're like, what tracksmith shorts? Yeah. It's like, no, you see the rabbit on his yeah. leg? Chase the rabbit. 
that ra- not that rabbit. Yeah. Um, so okay. I can't. I have to say I love the shorts. If I had them in like maybe an opaque color. Yeah, I, I have really, them. Really, really like them, and it has tons of pocket storage and everything. I have a version of them from a couple years ago in the navy blue, and they're really nice. See, I've never had this Dorada before, and uh, which is weird because I love you know the Van Cortlandt's my go-to, mm-hmm. but um, I think I could g- get convinced to do the Strata for races, but apparently the pair I have is not going to be. Um, yeah, and I don't even know what like I, it's not like I could dye them; it would change. Well, could you dye your your body Ding parts? Dong. Yeah. Dye them invisible. Make them white. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It'd still look weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, so that probably don't get the white shorts unless you're an exhibitionist and go for it. Or you wear some sort of, um, what do they call it? In I think I, th- I have a pair too. I think I'll be okay. I think women will be fine. Oh. I think it's a dude problem. Yeah. Uh, I don't <laughs> know. You start 20- sweating in the front. I'll hose you down. See, yeah. It's going to be, I actually think it'll be worse for you guys. Because okay. if you get butt sweat. I'll be able to see like the whole crack and everything. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think I, I think it, you have. I, I think we need to do a test before you go out. Okay. All right. Well, anyways, so tracks me out here breaking laws. Um. I just think there's going to be a lot of fun runs. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of something else funny, but I think we exhausted everything in that. Sure did. That subject. Uh. Yeah. I don't know. You know, Summer Grit is still cranking along. Um, we're in week two and a half. Well, I guess by the time this podcast comes out. Two, two halfway weeks. through. Yeah. Halfway through. Do we got any crazy? Oh, you know, we never mentioned Patrick's. Uh, we did mention it. Pat Blair's charity. Oh, we never did mention that, right? Yeah, yeah, we need to mention his charity. Pat Blair, the Summer Grit leader, is. By like 80 miles. Yeah, he's insane. He does have a charity, so I believe it's adventuresforthecure.com, yeah. and he's trying to raise a bunch of money, so... And he's been... This charity is something he's been doing every... For yeah. For, like, a long time. Shoot. Um, let me find this real quick. So, anyways, you can... Um, so, they're donating to help children... With with disabilities in Kenya and helping to fight diabetes because I believe it's kind of near and dear to their hearts. I think someone in their crew uh, struggles with that. So if you could definitely go to adventuresforthecure.com and, you know, if you want to donate anything to him, he's an amazing human, super cool guy, Is has almost 300 miles and we're 11 days into grit, dude. It's crazy. What? That's a lot of miles. If you do the math there, how many miles is that? He's doing them. I think he's averaging a marathon a day. Yeah. Yeah, he's that's what he's averaging. He won the Kata- during this too. He won the Katakton 50k. Wait, oh, he did? Yeah. He did it in 5 hours and what? 3 minutes and stuff. And Johnny Lyons, who's a super strong runner, yeah, finished like 2 hours behind him. Oh my gosh. So like he must have been blazing. That's crazy. Yeah, there's some uh some people putting up some big numbers. We have a few other people who have been hit over 200 as well. Um, we'll just, we'll, if we could throw his link to his charity okay, into I'll the put description. It, I'll put it in the description. And so we are also, all the grit gear is in. We are packing it. Packing it. Labels are printed. So you might get an alert that's like, oh, your label's been like printed. Created. But we're still in the middle of packing. Reminder, we do this all ourselves by in hand. office by hand. And we got to get other work done as well. Yeah. And so hopefully, like, they should be out within the also, next week Also, shout out to so. Helen, who is doing a fabulous job staying organized on this. I know that typically Megan had to do a lot of the uh, what she's taken off your plate, which is fantastic for you. But also, like, we appreciate the yeah, work Helen's that she's the best. doing. And she's been responding to people's questions on, on the gram. So if you get a note from Helen... Just know that she's busting her butt trying to get all this stuff out with us as well. Yeah. So, um, so anyways, but Summer Grit's awesome. The slacking is branded. And, yeah, he's, he's like the worst. Out in Sioux Falls, North Dakota or something. Sioux Falls, right? Yeah. I don't know, Sioux Falls. Sioux, 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 Falls. Sioux, Sioux City. City. No, it's maybe it sounds not, horrible. Maybe not even a real place. Yeah. But uh, we have to mention that our Summer Grit party slash just 
uh, hydration summer hydration tour. tour and just regular life party is on Thursday, July 20th at 5 o'clock p.m. Listen to what's happening. Five the first 150 p.m. people to get show there. up. They get a CLA hat. Yeah. They get, uh, there's t-shirts for the hydration tour. T-shirts and tank tops. We're going to have scratch here. We're going to have uh, like other stuff here. You're going to meet Kayano san Think about that. That's, the guy that started the whole Kayano. That is actually nuts. It's going to be here. We're going to have other A6 team members. We're going to have Kafuzi, who doesn't think the shorts are see-through. We're going to have Greg. <laughs> I think it's Itahara. Is it is it is I or Itahara? Well, Ita, Ita, Itahara. Okay. I think it's Greg Itahara. Um at, who is the uh, garment tattooer. So he basically takes, makes all the custom singlets for people and stuff like that. He's going to be here. I think he's got a surprise for the A6 team. And we are going to uh, have feathers, obviously, here. And we're going to jog three miles over to Mobtown, where we'll have Mobtown beers and pizza on A6 and just have a really fun night. Yeah, so... Talk about needing hydration for Friday morning. You're probably going to need. And is there going to be, scratch. do you know there's going to be a bag drop or anything? There or, is. I okay. think that what we're going to do is the, the A16 will bring the stuff over to Mobtown. Yeah. And you'll be able to have, have your stuff there. It's a three mile run to Mobtown if we stretch it's, it. it. It's yeah, probably a mile and a half if you ran straight. Exactly. What are we going to run up to the park? Yeah, uh, we're going to figure out a route. I was route. thinking you, we or run to down water. to the water. Figure out a route. Uh, to make it three miles but yeah if you point to point it's like a mile and a half to get back to your cars or whatever so it's not so bad yeah but i mean also parking might be a little better over mob town so if you want to get extra miles that's true you could start there run over here and uh then shoot there. back yeah yeah don't park in my don't park in front of my house or i'll have my kids egg your car yeah it was cute when we got back from uh oakland robbie's kids were out playing and daddy daddy yeah. And ran up and you could see the satisfaction on Robbie's face. Like, yeah, I'm the man. <laughs> Number one dad right here. I was <laughs> like, this. someone, someone's cheering for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was good. And then I was immediately banished them to their room. So I could just lay down and relax. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was straight back into father mode. So it was like constant. I was like, Oh man, my brain is about to melt. Cause oh. there's like inputs coming from like every direction about like what's happening look at this like, picture i drew yeah basically <laughs> honestly yeah it is exactly that uh, um anyways so cool well let's see anything else for today uh no i want to say thanks to norda and thanks to uh victor for hosting us out in oakland had a great time thanks to everybody who came out for the uh, party there it was rad i mean i loved the run even though i got gas going up the hill Cause you know, hills are my strength and, um, just a fun time. Great, great time. And thanks to Durs and, uh, for making it up from LA for mm -hmm. us and hanging out. That was a lot of fun. And, uh, thanks to Brandon for editing up this podcast. Yep. All right. Hi, Ma. <laughs> <laughs>